Hello, my soccer universe. Let's put a wrapper on Euro 2024. I want to look back a little bit, talk about the good, the bad and the ugly. I want to dish out performance grades for each of the 24 teams. I want to also summarize like every game and then Euro 2024 is officially history on my soccer universe. And before we get to the review, there was a big piece of news yesterday with Gary Southgate stepping down as England coach after he lost his second consecutive Euro final. I don't know exactly what his motivations and reasons for this step were. I definitely have to say that I think it's probably the right time to step down. I would have loved for him to win a title. However, the way he was playing, it was just not good. And maybe someone else can take this super talented crop of players a step forward. But you also have to look back where England was when Southgate took over and where England are now. England are now, he definitely re-established England as a top nation. And yes, his playing style was probably not suited anymore to this team. 2018, it was spot on. Since then, not so much anymore. However, let's start with some positive things when talking about Euro 2024. The good, first of all, the fans are back. This was a tournament in the old style. We have a traditional soccer nation in Germany that is easy to reach, geographically very conveniently located. Almost any nation had plenty of fans there. And I want to definitely pick out the Turkish fans, the second most supported nation at these Euros, and the Dutch fans who always come in big droves. And it was an easy drive for them. But you know, those are just two that really stuck out, but there were plenty of others as well. It was great and it was most of the time peaceful, maybe cringe-worthy were all these foot comparisons. I also want to point out that beside a key issue which will be at the bed, I think Germany as an organizing country again did it well. Great stadiums that just have a good atmosphere. Five of the stadiums were second league stadiums, which is probably a little bit of a surprising fact. But you know, with the stadiums, with the fan zones and so on, German organization usually works well and Germany is really primed for such a tournament. And yes, there is one big downside that I need to mention a little bit later. I also thought that UEFA saying that only captains can talk to the referees was a huge improvement. We didn't have the crowding up of the referees, did not always work. Certain players that think of themselves very highly could not stop themselves from talking. But in general, this was a great introduction. I also want to point out the noisy outsiders, Albania and Georgia. Albania acquitted themselves very well. Yes, they finished last in their group, but Albania had a shot of getting out of this group. But I definitely have to mention Georgia, who, yes, a third place team as one of the rank outsiders, really put up great shows, great showing against Turkey, one of the best games of the tournament, the win against Portugal, and yes, even against Spain, they gave them a little bit of trouble. Two other positive teams I want to mention, of course, my home country, Austria and Turkey, two of the few teams that really played on the front foot that both had to meet in the round of 16 was probably not that good for the tournament. But I think both teams really put a positive mark on this tournament. And then, of course, the winners, Spain. Spain were by far the best team in this tournament from the first to the last game. They were convincing, they showed good stuff and they went through the gauntlet. Every big nation that you could face, Spain actually faced and that makes them a worthy champion. Two other things that I want to mention are, of course, the early kickoffs in the group stage. Those were the games you needed to watch. Those were the exciting games usually. They really delivered. As soon as they went the way, there was something missing. Yes, they were not always convenient to watch, but those were mostly exciting games that got late turnarounds, but also had good level of play. And then also we had quite a few late goals despite stoppage times usually being shorter than we had at the World Cup. England definitely saving themselves with probably the goal of the tournament by Bellingham against Slovakia, also with a late goal. That being a particular highlight. Now let's go over to the bad public transportation. That is the big downer for Germany as an organizing country. They could not handle it. They were awful. Fans missed games because of that. Something you don't want to see. On goals, we had 11 on goals. Yes, on goals is a recent statistic. We had already a record number last time around, but yeah, 11 on goals. That's not a good statistic. We actually want to see striker scoring. The tournament format. I really hate this 24 team tournament format because it is not straightforward with the best placed third teams. You know, Hungary were among the first teams to be in third place confirmed and they had to wait until the very end until it was confirmed that they were out 
not good for them and not good for the tournament in general. I don't like it. I think the quality of the teams is meanwhile so high that you probably could go to 32, although that means that more than half of the teams qualify for the Euros. But yeah, you might as well make the Nations League into the new Euros. And I think you have something a little bit more reasonable. I also didn't like how the bracket set up, for instance, that Austria and the Netherlands, who were group opponents, could already meet in a quarterfinal. There's something wrong with the format. The format also contributed to the rather dull level of play. Yes, the first round was really good. And I think semi-final and final made up for a lot of the draws that we saw in between. Goal scoring really, really down. And it was more or less that starting with match, the two teams played tactically. The superstars were also missing out. I mean, who were the three superstars ahead of the tournament? Mbappé. I guess the nose had something to do with that, but also his big miss already against Austria showed that he might not be at his highest level and he was more concerned with politics and so on. Maybe his move to Real Madrid. Harry Kane not looking fit at all. So this did not work out. And then the third one, Cristiano Ronaldo. Yes, I don't think he's a superstar anymore. And this moment he's actually hurting his legacy more than anything else and also hampering his team, which also plays in the next one. The tentative heavyweights. Coach Martinez did not have the guts to drop Ronaldo against Georgia. He got substituted in the 60th minute and threw a hissy fit. Although England and France Two teams that have so much exciting talent and cannot get it onto the field. And then there's the really, really, really ugly. And that is all this political nationalism slash racism that we saw. The most obvious ones were the Albanian fans chanting for a great Albania to taunt the Serbian fans. There were also, unfortunately, I have to say, at the Austria games, quite some right wing fans in there chanting ugly things. And I'm not proud of that. Overall, as an Austrian, I'm very proud of what the team achieved. But some of the banners and so on were not pretty at all. And then, of course, it ended with the wolf salute by Demiral after the game against Austria. So yeah, highly charged there as well. And then brought in him Erdogan to the quarterfinal. Didn't like that at all for me. This is the ugliest side. I understand that you cannot really separate politics from sports anymore. However, I would like to not see these scenes. Performance grades. And before I show them to you, this is strictly based on pre-tournament expectations, where I look at each team's pre-tournament probabilities of reaching certain stages and then see what's the probability that they would overachieve and the probability that they would underachieve. And then I take the difference of these and I can get an index of that that I scaled them from a minus 100 to 100. I can also then translate it into from 0 to 100 to get a performance percentage. And based on that, I dish out grades. So here they are. Let's start on the bottom. Of course, teams seeding of the bottom of their groups will always perform badly in such a ranking. And so even the Czech Republic seeding relatively low, although they were probably the most unlucky team of the entire Euros. But we can definitely see that, for instance, Croatia, definitely a negative uh, performer. I have to say Albania, I would have probably ranked higher, but they only finished last in the group. So you cannot really move up. Italy with a great C, the same as Denmark and Austria doesn't seem right but yeah they reached the next round and for Austria I can see that it was a C because yes the group stage was A++++ you reached first place but that should set you up for a deeper run that did not happen however if we look towards the top I think it kind of makes sense Spain and England reaching the final I probably would have put the Dutch ahead of England but you know it's very very tight there Turkey Switzerland were good France I would have put below Germany I didn't mention them before but they were also one of the positive teams to watch at the end I want to look back at the entire tournament and reliving the excitement that we had. So please enjoy the next 15 minutes.
This ends now my coverage for Euro 2024. Given that the new club season starts relatively soon, I actually want to take a break for at least two weeks until the Austrian club season starts. You will get a preview video just ahead of that. But in between, maybe one, maybe two unpacking videos, but not more. I hope you will understand, but I will be back. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Drop your summary of the Euros below, and I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.